the 22nd of June. It's 2023. I'm nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Don't even ask me what's going on, because <clears throat> what do I know? What do I know? <clears throat> we lost our main screen just as we're about to go live. At least you got one screen working. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll get up to speed regardless. I'll figure it out in a second. I'm Dana Durnford. <clears throat> and uh, you can call in at 709-589-4406. Four four oh six. And we got a new cycle to get through tonight. Both of these uh, are nuclear scientists from uh, Australia. Australia's finest. And the lies that they tell, it's really something. It's a total disregard. They're actual nuclear scientists. <coughs> and um, the bottom guy, is, he uses the words bananas, <laughs> describing nuclear meltdowns. We got a poll for everybody tonight. Does Fukushima nuclear meltdowns Tritium fable proved that nuclear power is a menacing threat to humanity. And if you've never been around, then that's probably a bit of a shocker um, to you. Let's just jump into the nose cycle, the nosy news cycle. Eco friendly. Uh, nuclear thorium. I got this screwed up, do we? Eco-friendly nuclear thorium is a green energy solution. Uh, I'm not going to get it right this time either. As the world grapples with the ever-growing threat of climate change, The search for sustainable, eco-friendly, eco-friendly. There's um, now thorium reactors are going to produce. Are going to produce uranium two thirty two with a half life of sixty eight years. It's um, the decay of the thorium, by the way. Is 21 minutes. Yeah, 21 minutes. <clears throat> and then it decays. Let me see if we can get this sensible. Then the next decay is 26 days. And then the next decay. is 159,000 years, which is uranium-233. And because they'll tell you, well, thorium decays in 23 minutes. <laughs> Did, I laugh because it's a, what they do is it's a very, 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 very disciplined law. It's a very, it's, well, it's a law, right? A lie will always be a lie, except when it's a lie. <clears throat> Let me see if I can figure out what I got done here. What have I got done, my son? Here we go. I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. It'll make things go a bit smoother for us. 
so uh, we're getting there don't worry and so then it decays to plutonium well then there's plutonium 238 with a half-life of 87 years so 870 years Eight and so when they when they're claiming that the thorium reactors are not going to produce long half lives and it's better than the uranium. First off, it's a very difficult like the long short of it is the, in, the industries. I don't know. Actually, that kind of sums it up, right? Oh, oh, Gravity Falls, it is good to be back. Name's Bill Cipher. And I take it you're some kind of living ventriloquist dummy? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just yeah. kidding, I know Thank who you, you are, Gideon. What, what are you? H how do you know my name? Oh, I know lots of things. <laughs> I know lots of things, and they all go down the black hole, don't they? So there were several uranium-233 bombs have been already tested. But the presence of the uranium-233 tends to po or 232 tends to poison the uranium-2, what they call poisoning the uranium-233. Um, it's an intense radiation from uranium-232. And that's why it's so difficult to handle, and that's why they had no success with it. And 232, uh, sometimes pre, you get uh, accidental pre-detonations with the bombs. <laughs> but it can be done, obviously, see? And since those experiments were carried out, which is quite a long time ago, the crazies have come a long way. So the big thing to remember is, to, is, is the uranium-232 that they're going to be using for the thorium reactors in order to make it work is intense. It's, it's very, very difficult for anybody to handle it. And what they mean by that is to, it's difficult not to kill people with the radiation. And uranium-232 got a 68-year half-life. So 680 years. And this, we've been covering this. For, and we don't really cover the thorium that much anymore. But years ago, we, we've had to cover pretty regular. After Fukushima, they were really pushing the thorium reactors. <coughs> <laughs> so we're out on the boat today and uh, I posted a one hour live stream from the boat itself and so I'm not going to cover anything else tonight because because we've done a one hour stream on the ocean today and um, in all honesty all that fresh air and all this exercise has got me burnt out <laughs> today now we'll be back on the water again tomorrow. The, we got a lot of heat today too. And when I done the live stream, it, uh, there was a doldrum that started at that moment. And I didn't even know it until I realized all of a sudden the wind had just completely dropped out. And what it was, the wind was changing. <clears throat> and it's gonna change again to tomorrow morning to another westerly which is perfect for what we're doing. And we've seen, we had one glimpse of a whale again. It was a clear, not a glimpse, but a clear view of the whale when it went past. And the, you can see the backbone just sticking up in the air. It's emaciated for sure. Same as that one on the 1st of June in Cupid's. That was, 
they, they literally looked identical. They're very skinny, and you can see the backbone was very pronounced. But both times, I did, wasn't able to get a picture. First time, adverse conditions, and this time, I just couldn't find him again. He was moving so fast, because there was no food in the bay, and we were, we were exploring research in that bay, and we got a baseline of it. We're at the tip of the northern North America. We're out in the Atlantic Ocean, in the middle of the world's biggest seabird migration route. This is right there. This is the nesting grounds, and there's no nest. And so the industry is just insane. It's that. It's insane what the, the industry is actually doing to the species and humanity, and. They've captured all of all all of it seems it seems like a great big conspiracy. So to the average person it doesn't even seem real, right? I'll be streaming again tomorrow from the ocean, I'm pretty sure. So we'll deal with it again tomorrow. Government calls for refraining from referring to Fukushima water as nuclear waste. I just wanted to put that in there because this will disappear, and they're going to be doing daily briefings, and everybody will get... They're, they're just trying to wear people out with propaganda. And it's very effective, by the way. We've seen this succeed many times. So this is a professor giving a lecture to the government... and basically calls for refraining from referring to Fukushima water as nuclear wastewater. And so this is an artificial protest about tritium. So they only, they're only acknowledging anybody who's protesting tritium, which is the cover story, right? I'm not going to do that tonight because I can't go through it tonight. Let them stew over the week, and we'll pick it up on Sunday, I guess. Import from Japanese seafood shrunk for two consecutive months. And so this is why you see Korea, so Korea, coming out trying to calm the population. They desperately want them to eat that seafood that's radioactive. What a weird time to be alive, you know? Nuclear diesel. So this is where you make synthetic fuel with nuclear power plants, and de and therefore it's considered green. And so we see that with the hydrogen with nuclear power plants, where they're making hydrogen, and they consider that green. And now they're talking about nuclear type of uh, like diesel, or any, you know biofuels, and then call that green. And so that's what. The, and we've seen this quite a while, right? The carbon-free, net zero, climate change, global warming mantra is... Um, oh, wow. I'm still dehydrated from the day. I drink lots of fluids. It was just the first heat wave we've had here this year. And so synthetic, synthetic <clears throat> if you're making it with nuclear, right, it's not green. That's the problem. If you're making it with nuclear, there's no such thing as green. But the sale of internal combustion vehicles would be allowed to continue, but there's a ban on gasoline vehicles. But with, if you use their so-called nuclear e-fuel, you know, what a, what a sadistic industry. They're, and this is how they work. They look long term. They look 100 years down the road. So it makes it very difficult to get rid of them when they're so firmly entrenched. Scientists use underground, but they're going to have to go. They go or, or all the species and the humans go, one or the other. Scientists used underground nuclear explosions to study the Earth's core. I hate scientists just a little tiny bit more when I read that story, tell you what. You know, when they set off nuclear explosions, you change the structure of water for 1,800 miles circumference around the explosion. The 
the, the water actually changed the structure. <clears throat> and uh, wa like water is your best friend. Water, without water, no life exists. We can't survive more than a couple of days without water, but we can live for months without food, theoretically, right? If we got water. There are many ways to look at the core. One of them involves nuclear weapons. So when you set off the weapon, uh, the earth re reverberates. And like I say, water changes structure 1,800 miles away. And so they set up listening devices, so-called. And if the sound wave shows up quick compared to the other spots at the same distance, then it means there's empty or if there's a delay then it's liquid or if it's a long delay it's oil if it's this kind of delay it's gas blah 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 and so it's, it's just a big but these are dirty bombs we're talking about Every, everything with nuclear is the only way to look at it is a dirty bomb and then you can have a future if you treat it appropriately the Philippines, all walks of life, protest Japan's nuclear contaminated water discharge plan. Now, they're not allowed to say that according to South Korea. You have to refrain from saying stuff like that. But they're going to protest the tritium instead of what's been going on for 12 years. So they're, they're 12 years behind. 12 years behind. Come on, stop it. <laughs> okay. That was weird. Where the hell did that come from? So they're, they're, they're the useful idiots who are protesting tritium. That's the last time you'll slap your willy around. Uh, that's a... One more time, that was weird. <laughs> That's the last time you'll slap your willy around. Yeah, cartoons, man. So Brunswick Nuclear Plant is going to be testing their 38 sirens. I had to look it up. Yeah, 38 sirens. And these things will terrify pets and animals and birds and children, eh? They were put there as a safety so you can evacuate after what happened. At, after, they exist because of Three Mile Island and because activists needed a, some kind of concession. And this was what they'd done. They said, well, nuclear power plants across the country in America will have to put up sirens in some places for, where you can everybody within 10 miles can hear. And so some places got like 140 sirens, and these, they will never use them if there's an accident. And they got, every time I, because I don't watch TV, I don't, I don't, uh, I haven't watched TV for 25 years or something. Well, it's probably longer than that now, about 30 years, I guess. And so every time I see these little clips, these people scared the shit out of me. If I had that creature for a neighbor, I'd have to move, see? And they all got that same weird look about them. Like, I cut your throat, look. Duke Energy. How many, like, if you looked at, because they have a lot of uh, energy, comp a lot of nuclear power plants. If you actually looked at all the scandals and because they're corporate personhood, nobody can go to jail. All you can do is get a fine. If you'd done it, you'd go to jail for life and they would do documentaries on how evil you were. If they do it, because they're corporations, there's nobody you can hold accountable because it's stockholders, right? You can't put the stockholders in jail. <clears throat> so, so they don't have any incentive not to be evil because the profit they make the fines are only going to be piddlings, just a fraction of the profits. So it's good business for them. Uh, 
Uh, but they're never going to, you know, they're never going to use the sirens if there's a nuclear meltdown or a nuclear accident. It'll never happen. Behind India's nuclear pride, the villagers weep radioactive cries. And so the villagers, we've covered this a lot over the years, different stories about how the communities where they built the plants were displaced, were ostracized and victimized. And in some, like in some cases, I'll show you an extreme case of India after Fukushima, there was protest of a uh, new nuclear power plant. Let me see if I can find that story. It's been quite a while. I'm pretty sure I know where I put it. Oh yeah, there it is. All right, so India's Kudakula nuclear power plant, when they were going to build it, the protesters, there was 9,000 protesters. And there were, there were peaceful protesters. These are very, very humble, impoverished people. And so in India, the police carry... Um, hardwood sticks and they'll they beat they're like uh, four feet sticks and they're, they're they're quite the weapon if you know how to use them and they beat the uh, daylights at a nine thousand protesters and charged them with sedition there was over ten thousand charged with sedition that their crime was pa participating in a peaceful protest against establishing a nuclear disease factory in their community. And this was after Fukushima, yeah, 2000. Now this update was 2019, but it happened uh, 2012, I think it was. <coughs> They're, they still haven't been to trial, 9,000 of these impoverished people. They can't go to school. They can't open a new bank account because they're waiting to go to trial, and that's how it works in India. If you got an education, a lot of them do. They can't leave the country to, to make better of their lives because they're waiting trial. And they drag them into court over and over and over and punish them. And it's really something. It's, it's contempt on a whole different level. We've never seen this with anything else. Nuclear does this, wherever nuclear goes, it just destroys the wholesomeness and the communities and the countries. And when you look at, once you build these places and how they treat the local people, pe scores of people born disabled, bodies shriveling at age 40, they lose their lands, their properties, their livelihoods, and being miserable now is the norm. It's just, they got this long, you know, these people with skin diseases. And uh, before that, everything was fine. They never had any of these ailments. They never had all these disfigured and deformed children, these malformed fetuses. Each family was promised uh, 12 dismals of land because of the land that they lost. Uh, but the toll that they lost is much more than... And in a few cases, it won't even cover the area where the houses were. So the land that they were going to give them was tiny speck of land. It's just incredible contempt, isn't it? They're notorious for dumping their waste in the riv local uh, rivers and estuaries. And in this case, they're talking about well, for every kilogram of uranium extracted, uh, radioactive waste is around 1,700 kilograms is released as tailings. And so the tailing ponds, the, and they're running these pipes from the nuclear plants, and the pipes are all covered over with the cut 
bushes and stuff like that. And they go right into the local creeks and uh, streams and rivers. 500 meters away from the tail boundaries from the, of the tailing ponds, young kids can be seen playing cards on the ground and children wander around underwear, unaware of the air that they're breathing. And like, if you really want to see the extreme, that's one of the best places you can go. And uh, Niger is another place, what the French do to the Niger population for 60 years. Well, they destroyed the entire country so they can have cheap uranium in France. And then all the nuclear power plants in France are surrounded by farms. And 70% of the fresh water in France has to go to the nuclear industry. So every year, hundreds of elderly die in the summer because they haven't got um, there's all these restrictions on water. The impact of radiation cannot be understood in a year or two. Its effect might not show up for a long time, but as the years proceed, radiation starts to impact the victims' bodies. And, and they're noticing it's showing up in skin diseases they've never seen before. But communities quite a distance away don't have these ailments, right? And that all the water, the animals won't even drink from the local ponds, which is where people, you know, big rivers and ponds, but are now polluted by the nuclear industry there. Even the animals refrain from drinking water. It used to be home to loads of fish and the villagers would eat it and sell it. Now it's a dead pond completely turned green. And it's close to the tailing ponds from, and the tailing ponds has got no cover. So the radiation is emitted from these places. These are very, very humble people, right? So it's easy to manipulate them. They don't know much about the real world. They're basically illiterates, but they're people, and they've been doing this for, living there for thousands of years. It's the same thing for what they done to the, the Americans, had done to the Marshall Islands, the French done to the French Polynesians, the British, the Christmas Island, Montebello in Australia and other places. And there's a big list, you know, China, India, Pakistan, <coughs> Israel, the rest of them are all doing similar stuff, right? So the United States radioactive legacy in the Marshall Islands. So this stuff, this story kind of beats around the bush. I've been at this too long to go beating around the bush. I'm not going to do it to you. So the best way to talk to understand the Bikini Islands, if I could find it. Yeah, it'll do. Uh, this was a study from 2019. It was a long study, and I was reading through it. And where's the punchline? Here was the punchline. Did the radiation contamination, the radioactive fallout contaminated a huge swath of the land and the ocean, extending over a million square kilometers. You, that was 2019. It's too radioactive to live in the ocean and, and fish migrate through there and everything else, right? Extend over a million square kilometers. That's absurd, a million square kilometers? One million square kilometers of a nuclear wasteland. Local nuclear experts, South Korea, I guess. Yeah, South Korea. No, local nuclear experts dismiss Fukushima water concerns. A group of nuclear experts in South Korea dismiss concerns over, and we see this endlessly. It boggles the mind 
that it's, it appears to me, well, not appears, but the evidence uh, is unassailable that this is a nuclear scientist's job. One of their most important jobs is manipulating people and, and uh, and just basically lying for interviews. And I get upset sometimes and I apologize, but when you see the planet being exterminated and you're a very public person like I am, a very, I, you know, my, I, I live my life is on my sleeve all the time. I'm very public. I don't, because that's the only way you can do what I'm doing. You have to, you have to be answerable, you, you know, I, I I, I, and what I mean by that is like I try to provide the documentations for anything that might be controversial. So if I say something controversial like the Marshall Islands is a million square kilometers, <clears throat> is a nuclear wasteland, then I need to be able to back it up, right? Even though my words should be good enough, the reality of it is the best way to end the debate is provide the documentation like I've done in the last story. Uh, the ELP system actually doesn't work, and we and I'm not going to do that tonight because it's been a long day, a very long day. Yesterday was a long day too for me, and uh, it's a lot of stress uh, taking the boat out. Believe it or not, just loading everything up <coughs> and driving away with the boat in tow, and, and it's made, You know, have I got everything? What did I forget? And you're, you, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and you got to hook everything up, and you get it out of the driveway, and you, you're driving down the road. I make a checklist, right, each night. And when you're driving down the road, you're, you, you know, you got to pay attention to everything you're doing, blah, blah, blah. You get the boat down, to put the boat into the water, and you got to back it up and slowly get it in the water. You got to get all the straps off before you do that load up the boat, get the boat set up so that you can fire up the engines. <coughs> then you gotta pull, you gotta park the boat, go back and get in the truck, drag the trailer out of the water and park the trailer, make sure you take everything with you, go down and get aboard the boat. Then you gotta dodge out of the harbor and list. And every, everything is, cal is a calculated risk anyway. And then you got to get busy and start looking for birds, so that, which means you're not paying attention to your surrounding, your direct surrounding. And so on a boat, it's pretty easy to smack your head or your elbow or trip and fall overboard. There's all kinds of issues, right? And so South Korea just rolled out some lawyers and they told a bunch of lies. And these are societies. Now, I don't remember hearing them use that context, so I decided to cover that. They said the total amount of tritium in the radioactive wastewater is approximately, like the 1,000 tanks they're saying is 2.2 grams of tritium. And Japan plans to release 0 0.062 grams per year. Now, we've never heard this before, have we? Until like the last week or something. But there it is, that's the official story, 2.2 grams. And the whole world is upset over 2.2 grams, what they're saying, a tritium. <laughs> Hang on. So that's, that's a pretty vicious lie. Let me explain it to you. Because it's actually super important, right? My system's a bit slow. I, th I think it's just me. I was, uh, I had the show ready to go about three hours ago and I passed out. Just instead of clicking the preamble to post it on YouTube, <laughs> I fell asleep. And so I woke up, you know, just an hour before the show started and it was unbelievably groggy. And I, I guess it was the heat that really done me in, maybe, right? And then I realized, oh shit, I never clicked the button, right? I fell asleep with the mouse in my hand. 
Ouch. Hang on. Let me, let me crack this narrative apart for you, because that's important. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So it's pretty despicable to claim that the only thing came out of Fukushima is 2.2 grams. Because they, they got everybody focused in on tanks, right? But the reality of it was, this was the stump of Reactor 3. This, you're talking about it's millions and millions and millions of pounds of uranium and plutonium was actually lost. That was Reactor 3. When he stripped it away, it was, it was only the stump left. And this is the stump of Reactor 4. And at the top of Reactor 4 were decades of reactor cores in the fuel pools. And each rod, and there's 100 rods in an assembly, for instance. Each rod is 18 pounds. But officially, that never happened. The only thing that's going to go in the ocean is 2.2 grams. And of that, it's going to be 0 0.062 grams a year. And the Nuclear Scientist Society in South Korea wrote. And so this is what I mean. This It's an incredibly absurd despicable lie that 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 is is that not a despicable lie so they they refuse to acknowledge the fuel is gone and that nothing has ever happened none of this has ever happened that's the official story today 12 years later that never happened and the only thing we're worried about is 2.2 grams over 30 years so, like, you can see why I'm a bit upset about that kind of lie. And because you didn't hold them accountable for all the lies they were telling, they went nuts. They were like, well, let's, let's tell a bigger whopper. So I, th I thought this was a pretty bad whopper where all the media is worldwide, this is just a fraction of them, are pretending they're 100 feet above that building. But they took that a step further no, they, they took that to a whole different dimension. And now the only thing that Fukushima has ever released will be 2.2 grams of tritium over 30 years. So, like, what? That's the official story, folks, is 2.2 grams. That's all that got out of these missing buildings is 2.2 grams. The reactor cores were actually ejected right out of the buildings. <clears throat> Here's one of the medias pretending they're in the building to the left, which is now on the right. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. Now, this um, Cecilia Vega, she's currently on the media press club at the White House. She's pretending nothing got out, period. And now the official story is 2.2 grams over 30 years. So... Anyways, I'm not going to bang my head into a wall. Uh, you remember we covered a few stories from these uh, streamers that went into... Now, they went into Okuma, and they actually showed videos from in the hospital. You remember I covered that? They went there in 2019. The hospitals were perfectly intact with a, a billion dollars worth of equipment. When they went back this year, the hospitals were looted. There was nothing in the hospitals. So what would you do with a billion dollars worth of equipment that looks perfect, but is actually radioactive? Well, you sell it for half a billion to a country that doesn't know better. And that's what's happened. And so the government went after them 
now they're being charged and who knows what else is it's a it's a complete bar, bizarre story now they went in their kuma which is a nuclear wasteland so the nuclear wastelands that exist are not real either because there's 2.2 grams of radiation but they're not going to release that till later so nothing got out so why is there nuclear wastelands if nothing got out? I, I'm just completely, you know, I can't, I can't believe that they're doing that. They're saying stuff like this. I just can't believe it. Japan denies a reported political donation to the International Atomic Energy Agency. Well, yeah, they they made donations there, right? Right, they made donations just recently to the International Atomic Energy Agency for uh, Rafael Grossi for Zaporizhia nuclear plant in Ukraine, right? Because we covered it here just a few weeks ago. Uh, but now they're denying that too. It's like they're denying the reactors got blown up. That never happened. Everything looks perfect. It, it, it never happens. So, so stop saying it happened. So this is an industry we can't let exist. This is, you know, right? We can't let this go on. We can't just sit in silence. You can't just sit in silence. Because this is a evil on a whole different level. Where you got all the media worldwide perpetrating a lie as a conspiracy, that's not acceptable. They're doing that because they killed the oceans and the planet in increments now. We're, we're on the death's doorstep. <clears throat> and the only opposition, really actual opposition, is right here. We're good at our job, but we're censored. But we're very effective at telling the story. We're really dedicated to it and to the research. But we're censored. We're completely uh, like we don't even exist. Yeah, good night, Dana. Dana's got to go. Taiwan to stop banning seafood from Japan's Fukushima regions. Now, it's not. I'm not doing a whole show tonight. I'm too burnt out. This one will probably be over in about 20 minutes or something. Taiwan to stop banding seafood, Japan's Fukushima regions. I just, I don't like missing a show. And so even if I'm too burnt out, I'll still do the show typically. This was 2022, by the way. And uh, in 2021, Europe and Britain, in particular in America, lifted the restrictions on the 14 prefectures without no referendum, without the media reporting on it, only the Japanese media reported on it. And the American media never even mentioned it. That's a perfect weapon against humanity in the 8 million species, right? Justice Party lawmakers, this is so Korea opposition, they're known as the Justice Party. They're leaves for Japan to protest Fukushima water release. And so they're going to be going to, they're going to be allowed to go to Fukushima plants. So we can almost guarantee that that's going to be the cover story too. And so they'll have two big parties versus the Democratic Party who seems to be telling the truth or close to the truth. But they're still talking about tritium. So if they're talking about tritium and they, and they don't know the reactors are destroyed, then that's, they're part of the cover story, right? Because how can you not know, go through all this work but not know the reactors are destroyed? And so this made me sick to my guts. This was Australia. Every time we come across something from Australia, man, my goodness, is I think this was Australia. Again, they're talking about the tritium. The tritium, tritium, then invoking 
uh, subsidy of UN, the World Health Organization, which has no sovereignty over anybody's countries. And Jim Smith uh, from the University of Portsmouth, UK. We've covered him quite a lot of times. He's, um, he's a bizarre creature. The sh his job is strictly to tell lies for the nuclear industry. And he's a, a very, very uh, well-positioned propaganda machine. And th that's what the universities are now. They're 100% they're propaganda machines for the nuclear industry. They're schools of mass destruction, basically. He said, keeping the water is a bigger threat than dumping it into the ocean. Then Australia's crazy's got to chip in. He said, we're talking about much less radioactivity than is allowed in drinking water around the world. He said, would I eat the fish? Yes, I would. Tony Hooker, director of the Center for Radiation Research at the University of Adelaide in Australia, which was con highly contaminated that city by bombs from the British, said in a briefing on Wednesday, in a briefing on Wednesday, Scientists say the worries are based on misinformation. He's a loathsome looking creature, isn't he? You, as soon as you look at him, you know he's going to be, because as soon as you know he's nuclear and you t like, take a look at him, you know he's going to be really revolting. He said he would stop short of drinking the treated water, but not because it's dangerous. No, he said, because it's seawater. Because he wouldn't drink it, not because it's dangerous, because it's seawater. Their parents of these people should be arrested for not drowning them when they were born, as far as I if in retrospect. And so you got everybody up protesting for tritium. Can't wait to see what the outcome of this is going to be over the next couple of months. Uh, David Kovchek, a nuclear physicist at the University of Auckland, said removal of nasty products, nuclear fission like strontium and cesium is more crucial issue versus naturally occurring tritium. So he's calling tritium naturally occurring. He said it'd be nice if there's some kind of international collaboration from people in the neighborhood like Korea, Taiwan, China. Well, 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 that's exactly what's going on. Japan, Taiwan, China, and South Korea working together to cause this fake narrative. Uh, ocean current expert at Taiwan's research institute claimed that the tritium release from Fukushima would take a year to reach Taiwan and two to three years to re reach the uh, west coast of North America. Which this is right back to when the accident first happened. That's the exact narrative from back then. Exactly. And he said, tritium occurs naturally due to the sun. S these are experts, by the way, stabbing you in the back. He said, the Pacific Ocean contains about 8.4 kilograms of tritium. And Japan's plan would add less than 0 0.1 grams a year. This is Nigel Marks from the Australia Curtin University. So if somebody from a uni if a professor from a university offers to give you a hand if you're broken down on the side of the road, the best thing to do is say no. These are actual real life scumbags. Ted Bundy got nothing on these people. These people make Ted Bundy look like a little schoolyard bully. Ted Bundy was no schoolyard bully. We'll add less than 0 0.1 gram a year. <laughs> like, you, you lost 12 million pounds. Twelve years ago, twelve million pounds, 
And you're talking about 0 0.1 grams. If I wasn't so tired, I'd fly down to Australia and punch you in the nose. He said there's more radiation in a banana than would be absorbed by fish from tree to Fukushima water. So there's more radiation in a banana than is in two massive nuclear reactors that melted down and lost eight or four, just four fuel pools are gone too. With each of them stuffed with decades of full reactor cores of uranium, plutonium. And so it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when I see these experts, these from the universities, professor after professor after professor after professor coming out and claiming What, what, water is the only liquid that exists in three, all three forms, liquid, gas, and solid. And, of course, life can't exist without water. And so when I say structured water, what I'm referring to is when you add chemicals to water or electricity, electrolysis to the water from pumps and that, Water changes its molecules to a different configuration. Now, that configuration is not a very healthy configuration. That's not the water that life is dependent upon. It's a different, you can drink it, and it kind of sustains life, but it's not the same. If you, if you give a plant str what the normal water, like if you run water over minerals, over rocks, and it comes out, the other end, this is what they call structured water, or, you know, from deep wells and everything else. That's what you're built on, the, the human body, animals and insects and birds and mammals and everything else is stru structured water. So if you give structured water to plants, they'll mature 30% earlier with 30% more foliage and 30% more fruit or flowers or whatever the case may be, right? And you can have an extra crop each year by using structured water. And structured water was shown to um, unplate the blood cells for cancer victims. And that was in a documentary at major institutions. But it was, uh, the name of it was BOA, B-O-E-A, I believe it is. And we're, it was all about doing these experiments with structured water. And so structured water, when you give it to a, a seedling, a plant, it can crack cement, you know, 300 atmospheric pressures. But there, there's, there's only two, as far as I know, there's only two types of water. And then this, I think this is the last story of night. Local opposition to Fukushima water release. This guy scared me. He's a uh, professor in Australia, and he was, he that that interview was freaky, some freaky shit. Where is it to back here? Yeah, right here. And that's Mar Nigel Marx from the previous story, by the way. That's him right there. From Australia. And my goodness, and she scares me, man. Just, just, I don't know what to make of this species of these, these people. These are a different species of humans where they'll cut the throats of all humans so they can get a paycheck. And look at the Piani's shoulder. I am the one who knocks. It's a very arrogant. This is associate. He's an associate professor, and he's at Curtin University also, and he's vicious. His his uh, he equates it to everything, like the typical apologist would do, but it was over the top. It's worth watching that interview. It's worth watching that contempt. 
And I think right here he tries to smile. That's the closest he'll ever get to a smile. And then he goes back to that face, his, his so-called poker face. That's his normal face. It was a re and so the camera is down low. He tilts his head back. It's like he's trying to hide himself, eh? A creepy. So he says there's not a shred of evidence to suggest that it's wrong to dump it in the ocean. Uh, he, he he said some disgusting stuff. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna bother tearing into it because I had a long day and I'm burnt out. I got a long day ahead of me tomorrow, and Saturday and Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. I was shocked today that I there's nothing out there. No fish jumping. There's nothing on the so on the sonar and the sounders. Underwater, there was no like you would you can see the fish, especially with this, the equipment I got is actually really good equipment. And uh, tomorrow the tide is going to be a lot better for me because I got to work the tides because the boat ramps here are no good at I can't get the boat out at low tide, so it's quite the headache for the last couple of days to me. And you can't put the boat in the water at half tide. Well, you got to wait. It's got to be at least half tide, high tide, before you can get the boat in the water. Because the bunch of wharfs we got down at the ramps, are, they screwed it up. There's, all you got to do is pour a bunch of shale out at the end of it to level it out, and then you can get it out at low tide too, right? And it would probably cost $500 or something. Again, he's from the Curtin University. Nigel Merckx. Th those two guys from Australia, that's, they're the furthest thing I've come across in a long time from humans. So if anybody that... I got no views again tonight. I got more views today, though, on and thumbs up on the stream from the ocean than I did on my show last night. <laughs> so they're desperate because they're, they're telling so many lies. They can't have a single, a single voice is not allowed on the planet that with another narrative, nothing. And uh, that's the most dangerous society you can ever live in is when another, you might not agree with my narrative, but I have a right to use it. That doesn't exist anymore, right? It's a total desperation for silence. So a lot of people have to participate in the law. So there's several shocking things to the, this progression, right? You can't have a future with a society like we're looking at now with this censored society where everything is just public relation firms. You can't actually have a future. Um, and Philip L. donated $30. And thank you, Philip. James Lucid donated $200. Uh, 58, I think it was, which is amazing, which covered all the expenses for the fuel for the truck and the boat. And that'll, that'll last me quite a while, right? Um, and so that was a, I was pretty thrilled to get that. I'm only doing a half a show tonight. It's not even an hour right now. Does Fukushima nuclear meltdowns, <clears throat> tritium fable, prove nuclear power is a menacing threat to humanity? And uh, we showed the evidence for that tonight in the show. That's exactly what we're seeing, right? This, this is a menace to society. Uh, 
a menace to humanity. This is a direct threat to the survival of the species. And while I might be censored, um, what I'm saying is still true. Just because I'm censored don't mean what I'm saying is not true. And what would you rather know? Would you rather know the truth or would you rather would you rather believe the picture to the right or the picture to the left? Because you can't believe both of them. And does the picture to the left, which was reactor four, look like they're going to lose a couple of grams over the next uh, 30 years? Or does it look like they lost the millions of pounds that was actually in it? And then you have to consider reactor three also. And remember, the same thing happened to reactor one and two eight fuel pools and four reactors lost their inventories. But the official story is it'll be less than two grams over the next 30 years. That's the strangest cover story I've ever heard. So they know they killed the Pacific is why they're saying that, see? They know they killed the Atlantic. That's why they're claiming only two grams over 30 years and that nothing has happened, because if something has already happened, then that can be blamed on the death of the oceans. And so, so that's the confirmation that, again, of how lethal the radiation actually is. Yeah, there you go. The starfish are on the truth, along with the snow crabs, the whales, and the food chain. It's impossible to beat that comment, James. <laughs> I just worked a whole hour to tell that story. James does it in a sentence. Gotta like it, man. <clears throat> okay, well, I, I most likely will be live streaming tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole hour live stream. Well, maybe I will. <clears throat> It'll be whatever it's going to be, obviously, right? But I think we got a handle on what they're up to at this stage. The truth is an extremely powerful thing, you know, folks. It's unbelievably powerful. It wrecks their official story immediately. Just a single picture. Right? Just a single picture. Rex, there's there. My understanding is on top of what used to be react. Sorry. Just a single picture. Rex, their narrative. <laughs> That's twice. <laughs> Jeez, I just woke up. <sighs> Maybe I'll do another hour. Nah, no, just kidding you. I gotta get up early because I'm headed back on the ocean tomorrow. And um, I done a live show last Saturday on Rumble. That's got four, almost 1,400 views. It's still growing every day. And I'll be doing another live show on Rumble maybe tomorrow night or Saturday night, depending on how much energy I got tomorrow night. I'm gonna try to do four shows a month on Rumble on Saturdays. I actually done a show last Friday and Saturday on Rumble. And then, so this is um, 12 days straight of shows right now. And I'm gonna be doing another one most likely tomorrow night. Certainly one tomorrow on the ocean. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody on the other side of madness. And the other side of the madness is us. Calm, cool, collect, and honest, and educational. Have a great night, a great day tomorrow. Uh, Kevin Blanche, hi, Kevin. Hugs for Kevin and everybody else. Have a great night. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you made it this far. It's uh, half a show tonight, so... We're hurting. 
I'm dumb, so it don't matter. We'll be back again tomorrow. Have a great night, a great day tomorrow. Hugs for you, your friends and your families and your loved ones and your pets and all the species. We'll see everybody on the other side. Good night. <laughs>